Hi there, and welcome to the Angela Marmont Centre here at the Natural History Museum. I'm Hirsch Chatuki, one of the museum's scientists, and today we're going to be talking about these common plants, the dock leaves and stinging nettles that you might see when you're out for a walk. How are you doing, Chatuki? I'm doing well, James, thank you. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm pretty good as well. And yeah, I was just wondering, so stinging nettles, obviously, I think we've all come across them, but why, why do they sting? Yeah, so stinging nettles, as we see here, have small hairs in their stem and their leaves. And they, these are hollow hairs and they're called trichomes as well. Mm -hmm. And inside these hairs, there's a special cocktail mix of different chemicals such as formic acid, histamines, um, and different sorts of things. And in the tip of these hairs, they have a small silica kind of barrier tip, okay. which when you brush past the uh, stinging nettle on your walk perhaps, it breaks off and then, like a medical syringe, you get kind of sprayed with this um, cocktail mix of chemicals in your skin, which is what causes them to, yeah, irritate your, your skin. And, you know, kind of obviously, like, when we walk past, like, that's fine, but, like, you, you know, you might see a fly or a beetle or something crawling over it, you know, like, do they also get affected? So, actually, that's a great question. Insects are much more delicate, you would imagine, than um, humans or large mammals, right? So they're delicate, like, you know, when they're kind of using the plants, they don't actually apply enough pressure to uh, break these cilia tips, which means that they actually don't get affected by the chemicals. Um, also, you know, because the chemicals are kind of evolved in a way to only affect and keep large herbivores away, um, their immune system don't actually get affected in the same way as big mammals do. And actually, this touches upon kind of a good uh, point that Although, you know, they kind of annoy us, they're really quite important for local biodiversity. So okay. uh, the Biological Record Center found that over 100 species of insects, um, amphibians even, and birds can actually benefit from the stinging nettle. Oh. So, yeah, really quite important. And, you know, uh, butterflies, some of my favorite butterflies, actually, the peacock butterfly, the small tortoise shell, um, yeah, really benefit from it to lay eggs and forage and as a source of food as well. So, yeah, really quite, quite important plant. Yeah, and, you know, kind of like, obviously, as you can see here, we've, they're often found around the dock leaves. And, yes. you know, kind of like, is there a particular reason that they always kind of seem to grow in the same place? Yeah, so one reason is because they both kind of have the similar kind of ideal um, conditions in the habitat. Mm. So they both kind of like moist um, kind of soils and... Yeah, they're found in, you know, besides hedgerows and things like that. And that's why, yeah, you're tempted to grab a dock leaf and you get stung by a stinging nettle. Yeah, and I mean, that kind of idea goes back like kind of hundreds of years, doesn't it? It's like it's a really ancient kind of thing. It is. So there's been records that have um, found, you know, Geoffrey Chaucer, actually, the famous English poet, mm. had mentioned um, stinging nettles in one of his poems in the 14th century. So it actually, yeah, dates back to the medieval times. And um, yeah, it's been affecting people <laughs> for ages and ages. And there's also that famous chant, isn't there? Oh, yes. Uh, nettle out, dock in, dock remove the nettle sting, which it doesn't do anything, I don't think. But, you know, like it, it makes it seem like it's going to. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And the belief is that, yeah, if you chant this, um, this chant, that it will kind of the effect that the dock leaves is meant to have will be... Um, will be, yeah, kind of even better. I do want to focus a little bit on these specimens, actually, yeah. because I think they kind of nicely um, show you the two different, the two main species of dock that have been found in the UK. Um, what sort of differences do you think you can see with these two specimens? I guess it's, it's the size of the leaves, isn't it? You know, kind of the thinner ones and the thicker one over here. Exactly. So this is the broadleaf dock. And you can see that the leaf is a little bit, you know, kind of broader and um, heart shaped. And even the edges compared to the curl dock here um, is a little bit smoother. So in the curl dock, the, the edges are a little bit more serrated. Um, and you can see the quite nice uh, purpley flowers here as well in the, um, in the dock. And um, the dock is actually quite widespread all around the world. You know, you can find them in Central Asia, um, also in uh, North America and South America as well. Mm. So, yeah, loads of people around the world have, can get to experience and see docks in the wild. Is there anything that dock leaves are like used for? Yeah, so they actually have a um, like kind of um, chemical within them called ozalic acid. Um, and throughout history, the dock leaves have been used, you know, to wrap kind of tobacco, butter um, and kind of, yeah, functions like that. But um, and some people actually yeah eat it as well, but kind of 
it's not good to have um, more kind of a lot of dock leaves because of the um, the chemical that I was speaking about because um, a lot of it can actually not be that good for you. And you know, kind of like I guess that's kind of something where animals that might eat these plants aren't going to be as affected as we are, I guess. People might consider them a weed and even stinging nettles. And I think that's quite interesting, actually, the definition of a weed, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, gardeners perhaps might not want them in their garden. But like I said, in the stinging nettles, the dock leaves can also be really quite important in um, for, for the species and the local biodiversity. Some parts of the world also kind of think about dock leaves as being invasive. And um, some reason for this is that they have really quite deep rooted roots, mm -hmm. which mean that they can tolerate really harsh conditions and stay put okay. for a long while. So yeah, I think they're quite underrated actually. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think when it comes to eating things, I mean, I think the nettle probably seems, even though it seems odd, it seems like a better bet to eat, doesn't it? You know, you get your soups and everything like that. Exactly, and the yeah. tea as well. I've seen some make people make pasta as well, oh. which I haven't oh. tried. I don't know whether you have. No, I haven't, but I think I'd be very much interested. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I think, you know, kind of on that culinary note, I think, you know, that's kind of all we've got time for today. Yeah. But, you know, thank you very much for bringing all of these in. And yeah, it's been lovely talking to it's you. It's been lovely talking to you about seeing nettles and dock leaves. Right. And thank you everyone at home for watching. If we've planted some seeds of curiosity with this video, then don't forget to share your favourite moments down in the comments below. In the meantime, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe for more content from the Natural History Museum.